This is WLNH News, where we put the news in New Hampshire. Welcome to WLNH News. I'm Charlie. And I'm Meryl. Let's see what we'll be talking about today. First, we have Summer talking to us about CCHS. Next, we'll have Jawad talking about how plastic affects the ocean. After Jawad, we'll have Mason talking about a dog mayor. Then we'll have Dimitri talking about cookies in space. After Dimitri, we'll have Meryl talking about Antarctica. And last, we'll have Charlie talking about a 17-year-old finding a planet. Now let's go to Summer with CCHS. Hello, my name is Summer, and today I'm going to be talking about CCHS, a rare medical condition that only some people have. CCHS, also known as congenital central hypoventilation syndrome, is a disorder that affects normal breathing. People who have this disorder take slow and shallow breaths, which means they hypoventilate, especially during sleep, resulting in a shortage of oxygen. When that happens, carbon dioxide builds up in a person's blood, normally the part of the nervous system that controls non-automatic body processes would react to such a contrast by triggering the person to wake up. This nervous, this nervous system reaction is decreased in the people who have CCHS. For example, if you were swimming in a pool and, went, and you went underwater, after a while, people without CCHS would swim up to the surface for air because their brain triggers them to. But people with CCHS, if they were underwater for a while, their brains would not trigger them to swim up to the surface. People with CCHS must be provided with a special machine to help them breathe. Some people need this machine for 24 hours a day, while others only need it at night. Symptoms of congenital central hypoventilation syndrome usually become visible after birth when an affected infant hypoventilates while they are sleeping. In these infants, a lack of oxygen in their blood can often result in a bluish and slightly purple appearance on either the skin or the lips. But in the milder case, CCHS may not become obvious until later life. In addition to the breathing problem, people with CCHS may have difficulty regulating their heart rate and blood pressure. According to Genetics Home Reference, about 20% of people with CCHS have abnormalities in the nerves that control the digestive tract, resulting in severe constipation, intestinal blockage, and enlargement of the colon. Another thing is some people with CCHS develop learning disabilities and other visual problems. Those people can also have an increased risk of developing certain tumors of the nerve of the nervous system called neuroblastomas. Other individuals that have congenital central hypoventilation syndrome usually have eye deformities, including a decline response of their pupils to light. People with CCHS, especially children, may have a characteristic appearance of a short and slightly wide, somewhat flattened face, often known as box-shaped. CCHS is very rare, and only about 2,000 people have this condition worldwide. There is no cure for this condition. If you ask me about CCHS, I would tell you that I believe there will be a cure in the future someday. Thank you for listening and have a nice rest of your day. Back to you, Marilyn Charlie. It must be very hard for people with CCHS. They don't even have a cure. Moving on from summer, now we'll have Jawad talking about how plastic affects the ocean. Hi, my name is Jawad and I will be talking about how plastic affects our oceans. The plastics in the oceans are killing a lot of sea animals and they are getting hurt. If sea animals ingest plastics, they could have life-threatening problems. According to New Zealand, when plastic breaks into little pieces, fish eat it. Then we eat the fish and we get sick. In Australia, you could see so much plastics on the beach from miles away. According to New Zealand, straws and plastic bottles are the top ocean polluters. A lot of people are trying to get all the plastics out of the ocean, but it is very hard to, because every day thousands of plastic pieces are entering our oceans. Plastics are very strong, so they will not break down unless you take them out of the water and burn them. Young inventors like Boy and Slat from the Netherlands invented a system that cleans the plastics on the ocean surfaces using the ocean currents. Boyan hopes to send out 60 other devices to skim all the plastics from the oceans with hope of eventually having clean ocean surfaces around the world. 
Without the invention of cleanup machines, it would be much harder to eliminate plastics in the ocean by hand. Scientists are predicting that there will be no more plastics in the oceans by 2050 using these machines and other devices to clean out the plastics. I think that it is a very good idea to use recycling bins because it saves plastics from going in the oceans. Thank you for listening how, about how plastic affects the oceans, and I hope you learned a lot about this environmental problem. I can't believe plastic is affecting the ocean that much, but I'm glad people are helping our oceans. Now we have Mason with Mayor Max. If you want a candidate that knows how to fetch votes and smell out new ideas, then meet Mayor Max, the dog in office of Littlewild, California. Hi, I'm Mason Hearn. I Dang it. Just keep going. Hi, I'm Mason. I'll be talking to you about Mayor Max, a dog of a small town in California. Max took office at just 11 weeks old. He wears a variety of hats and ties and wants to make the world a, and wants to make the world a better place. But sometimes being mayor isn't easy. Um, he has to go out in public every single day and greet the residents of Little World. He helps raise businesses and charities and participates in special events such as the 4th of July parade and helps raise businesses. Did I think I already said that and visit schools and homes and retirement communities. You may be thinking, how does a dog become mayor? Well, Odawild had no human mayor, and according to Newslia, it started when Max benefited from his bloodline. Phyllis Mueller, Max's chief of Staten Human Companion, searched for Max when the first mayor Max died without any puppies. She was the companion for him also. Mueller found out that Max the second was related to the first mayor, Max. Maximus, my dog, Mueller the first, and it makes Max the second a king or a monarch. The first mayor, Max, was elected in 2012 during a fundraiser, and all the other candidates were pets as well. But during Max's second term in office, he died of cancer. But did Mueller give up? No. She found Max II close to home. And when Mueller first met him, he crossed his four legs and struck a pose. It was clear he was perfect for the job, Mueller said. I always knew he was an independent. Oh, come on. It was clear he was perfect for the job, Willa said. She also discovered that Max the first had relatives in Ohio. They now work as security for Max the second. People also ask if Max would run for president of the United States. This is a problem for k and candidates because dogs don't get to live that long. I always say he's an independent. Weller said, he loves everybody unconditionally. That's why you think he's so well loved, Weller also said. Well, doggone, I think I know who I'm voting for. Back to you, Charlie. Wow, I never would have thought that dogs would be part of the government. After Mason, we'll have Dimitri talking about cookies in space. Hello, my name is Demetrius, here to talk about cookies in space. Thanks to a new test oven, astronauts may be able to make chocolate chips chip cookies in, from scratch in space. According to Newslia, the zero-g oven is on its way to the ISS. The small electric oven is made for zero gravity. This would be a great change for astronauts that are used to eating reheated, freeze-dried food with the test oven. Astronauts may will be able to put the cookie dough in the oven and eat freshly baked cookies in space. The supplies launched from Virginia on the Cygnus capsule. The launch is a test run. The explorers to see to see if you can bake goods in space. 
The Zyoji Kitchen Program is run by husband and wife Ian and Jordan Fischenbaum. They live in New York. Zyoji Kitchen aims to create a kitchen in space with one appliance at a time. They are starting with the oven. Kitchen appliances are items like toasters and microwaves. The kitchen is the heart of the home to me, said Jordan Fischenbaum. She thinks having an oven in space will make it more comfortable, more pleasant and delicious. Ian Fischenbaum is her husband and co-owner. He says out of this world baking it can also entice the public and make space exploration more reli relatable. NanoRacks, a company based in Texas, collaborated with the designing and building of the oven. They also arranged the flight. It's the same recipe and same thing as on Earth. Before, astronauts have tried to use their own recipes in space. The cookie baking will take a long time. The oven can only bake one cookie at a time, and it'll be, it could be weeks before the astronauts may have time to try it out. The manager at NanoRack, Mary Murphy, expects each cookie to take from 15 to 20 minutes to bake at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The first cookie will be the real test. Without gravity, it could end up looking like a blob or a mini pancake. Three of the space cookies will come back to Earth to be examined. Baking doesn't always go according to plan, even on Earth, Murphy says. Thank you for listening to me. Back to you, Charlie and Meryl. I think it's so cool that astronauts may be able to have fresh food in outer space. This could really make a difference. Now we're going to Meryl about Antarctica. Have you ever wondered what lies inside of the ice caves of Antarctica or the record-breaking temperature in Antarctica? Well, that's what I'm going to be talking about today, the wonders of Antarctica. Ice caves have been hollowed out from steam from Antarctic volcanoes. A study by the Australian National University found that most ice caves are found near the volcano Mount Erebus, the second biggest volcano in Antarctica. One of the ice, when the research, researchers found that when they stepped into one of the ice caves, it was warm enough to wear a t-shirt and be comfortable. The ice caves might even reach up to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Le lead researcher Serdwin Fraser tested the soil's DNA from the cave and found traces of mosses, sea plants, and even small animals. This means there might even be a new species of plants and animals in the caves, Fraser says. Another interesting fact is that on Thursday, February 28, 2020, the highest recorded temperature in Antarctica was 64.9 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature broke the record of 63.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which was recorded on March 23, 2015. The National Meteorological Service has been recording the temperature in Antarctica since 1961. This record-breaking temperature has been scaring researchers for what is to come with global warming. In conclusion, I believe there are new species living in the ice caves, and I'm also worried about the effects of global warming. What do you think? I can't believe it got to 64.9 degrees Fahrenheit in Antarctica. Last, we'll have Charlie talking about a 17-year-old finding a planet. Hello, I'm Charlie. I will be talking about Wolf Kirkier, a 17-year-old NASA intern from Scarsdale, New York. Do you know anything about him? Well, I do. He founded a planet named TOI 1338b on his third day of his summer internship at the NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. Here is some information on TOI 1338b. This planet is not habitable and is 1,300 light years away from Earth. Another fact is that the planet is a circumnavigatory planet, which means that it orbits two stars. The two stars orbit each other every 15 days. The new planet is 6.9 times larger than Earth and is visually similar to the planet Tatooine from Star Wars, which also orbits two suns, except TOI 1338b is not habitable. The, this planet was the first planet orbiting two stars discovered by Tesla the test telescope. Wolf Kirkier found this planet while viewing data from the telescope. Time for Kids stated that Kirkier and his mentor were searching for two stars that would cross paths and create an eclipse. When 
Wolf saw something blocking the light and discovered that the TOI 1338b was orbiting between the two stars. In the interview, he said it was overwhelming and did not think the discovery would get as much attention as it did. Some scientists that would work at NASA never find planets, but this 17-year-old did. Now back to you, Meryl. I didn't know a 17-year-old could find a planet, especially on his third day of summer internship. Well, that's all we have for WLNH News. Tune in next time. Bye! Welcome to WTCK News with only the best news. Welcome to WTCK News. I'm Neil. And I'm Sarah. Today we have Jordan talking about Kobe Bryant. Addison talking about the moon and Brock talking about orcas. Matthew talking about team trees. Ben talking about slow lorises. Sarah talking about things that turned 20 in 2020. And Neil talking about self-driving cars. Now to Jordan about Kobe Bryant's death. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bean Bryant was an American basketball player that did a lot of charity work on and off the court. As the news broke January 26, we had heard that Kobe Bryant had died in a helicopter crash in the hills of California with his daughter Gigi and the eight others on the plane, including his pilot, who was 20 years of experience. This was sad to everyone, especially their families. On the court, Kobe was a legend. He played with the Los Angeles Lakers for 20 years. and was an 18-time All-Star and a 15-time All-NBA player. He had won an Academy Award for the show Dear Basketball. To Kobe, this was more important than winning an NBA championship, which he had done five times anyways. On January 26, 2006, he had scored 81 points against the Toronto Raptors, which was one of the best single-game performances in NBA history. On January 18, 2017, Kobe's jerseys for the, Los- for the Lakers, number 8 and 24, were retired. According to CNN, he and his daughter, Gigi, had an amazing relationship because he had coached her team. She wore number two on her team. Everyone close to him, like Shaquille O'Neal and his family, were devastated over this tragic death. LeBron James and the Lakers organization were so overwhelmed with grief. They had a memorial service outside of the Staples Center. LeBron James showed his love by getting a tattoo for the memory of Kobe Bryant and the eight others on the helicopter. People like Justin Bieber also showed his support by raising $12,000 for the memorial fund outside the Staples Center. Kobe and his daughter, Gigi, were buried February 7, 2020, just 12 days after they had died. Kobe was an, was an all-around great person who died and will always be remembered. Thank you, Jordan. We are all very sad about death. Now to Addison about the moon. Have days ever seemed long enough? I'm Addison, and today I'll be talking about the moon. Space scientists think that our moon was formed when a protoplanet about the size of Mars collided with Earth about 4.5 billion years ago. Did you know the moon is actually moving away from Earth? This is mainly due to the actions of Earth's tides and the forming... Oh, um... This is mainly due to Earth's tides and the movement of Earth's oceans forming a tidal bulge. It has also gotten longer over time. About one billion years ago, a day on Earth was a full five hours and 15 minutes shorter than it is now. Scientists use the astronomical theory, and they also examined very old rocks from about 4.5 billion years ago. The astronomical theory involves physics and chemistry to describe objects in space. The rock showed evidence that a day back then was only 18 hours and 41 minutes. A day is measured when the Earth completes a full rotation on its axis. Today, a day on Earth is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds, not 24 hours. According to scientists, the Earth's rotation is slowly winding down as the moon moves farther and farther away from Earth. In the opinion of Stefan Myers, a scientist at the University of Wisconsin, and Alberto Malverano, who works at Columbia University, 
Over the past 1.4 billion years, the moon has moved about 27,340 miles away. The average distance of the moon today is about 238,855 miles from Earth. Did you know the Earth wobbles and tilts towards and away from the sun, which is also known as the mitchell lavatic cycles? If you were wondering, don't worry, the moon will not just leave us one day, but a long time from now, the moon will reach a stable distance and stop. When that happens, the moon will only be visible from one half of the Earth and not visible from the other. To conclude, the moon is moving slowly away from Earth. This is mainly due to the actions of Earth's tides. Also, a day today is only 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Addison. I never knew that the moon was getting farther from us. Now to Brock with Orcas. Hey, my name is Brock St. Gilles, and I'm going to talk about orcas. Most people call them killer whales. Have you ever heard of these beautiful and dangerous species? They are marine mammals. They are, they are the largest species of the dolphin family. Isn't that a cool fact? They are one of the strongest sea creatures and live, live in the warm waters of the oceans. According to Newsly, a male orcas can weigh up to two tons and grow up to, thir to 30 feet. According to the Orlando Sea World, the largest orca is 32 feet long. Wow. That's big and long for a mammal under the dark ocean. Females orca, female orcas can weigh up to three tons and grow up to 26 feet. Female orcas have one baby at a time. Baby orcas tend to live with their mothers but male orcas mate from other pods. Other members from the pod sometimes take care of the baby. Orca one wait. Baby orca when their mother isn't there. Other members from the pod sometimes take care of the baby orca when their mother is not there. Female orcas feed their baby salmon. Another name for a baby orca is called a calf. When they, when they are born, they aren't white and black. Baby orcas are black and tan and pale yellow rather than creamy white. After their first year, they turn white. They are usually born in autumn, weigh up to weigh 400 pounds. Calves usually leave their mothers after six months and go into the deep blue sea. They are gentle animals only if they get nervous or frightened. When they attack, they don't like to kill people. Bacteria is bad for all anim animals. According to phys.org and can cause diseases, orcas are so big that they can get a lot more bacteria in their body. And that is bad for them when they come up to exhale air and take a deep breath. The bacteria in these big whales concern scientists. An orca is the ocean's top predator. They have no natural predators there. Prey is great white sharks, leopard seals, 
sea birds, sea turtles, and other sea creatures like sorts of fish. Orcas live in large groups of families which are called pods. Their name commands respect. Orcas communicate by using echolocation. They produce echolocation by whistling. They don't sleep a lot. In my opinion, orcas are my favorite sea animal. What's your favorite sea animal? Thank you for listening to my newscast about killer whales. I hope you liked it. Back to Sarah and, Sarah and Neil. Thank you, Brock. I never knew that the largest orca was 32 feet long. Now to Matthew with Team Trees. Did you donate to Team Trees? My name is Matthew, and today I'll be talking about Team Trees and how it will help the planet. Team Trees was a global 2019 collaborative fundraiser project whose goal was to plant 20 million trees by 2020. Jimmy Donaldson, or more commonly known as Mr. Beast on YouTube, started the whole thing when everyone kept asking him to plant 20 million trees to celebrate his getting 20 million subscribers on his channel. The Team Trees Corporation started planting trees because everyone was spamming Donaldson to do it on Twitter. The corporation was created on Friday, October 25th, 2019. Some 800,000 people from all over the world were donating. Every $1 equals one tree. The biggest donors were Toby Lutke with one million and one tree, and second was Elon Musk with one million trees, and in third was Mark Benoff with 900,000 trees. Team Trees are going to help the environment by fighting climate change and give us the oxygen we need since the rainforests are being destroyed. According to Wired.com, it will take up about 69 square miles and will help create homes for animals. Finally, after two months of fundraising, they did it. On December 19, 2019, they reached their goal, but it's still going. You can go to teamtrees.org to donate whenever you want. Currently, they have planted around 21 million trees around the world. That's pretty good. I hope you learned a lot about Team Trees and may even consider donating. Remember, every dollar counts. Thanks, Matthew. I think it's great that so many trees are getting planted. Now to Ben with Slow Lorises. Hi, I'm Ben Sakella reporting to you about slow lorises. Have you ever heard of a slow loris? They are being endangered because of their cuteness. Slow lorises are found in the tropical rainforests in Asia. They are trapped and taken out of the rainforest and are sold as pets. The average amount of money people sell them for is from $32 to $54. To stop this, people should send the slow lorises back to the rainforest. People do not do this, they may become extinct. According to Newsia, there are lots of deck solaroses, and if you steal one, you are breaking the law. There are six types of solaroses. There are pygmy solaroses, thunder solaroses, delving solaroses, bengal solaroses, and finally, the nysictibus canyon solaroses. Their diet consists mostly of insects and fruit. When people are taking these cute animals, they get really scared but they don't look scared. After they remove them from their habitats, you can make videos with them eating rice balls. According to National Geographic, animal trade is one of the most devastating parts of wildlife. Animal trade is when someone gets an animal that is not supposed to be taken from the habitat and is sold for profit. That is what is happening to the soil horses. I don't think people should do this. So the horses are one of the only venomous mammals. They could kill a human if it wanted to. When people take them from the rainforest, they usually cook their teeth just in case they bite, which is very painful for them. If you get bitten by a solaris, it will be extremely painful. In some circumstances, you could die from solaris venom. Hope you like learning about solarises and don't steal them from the rainforest. Thanks, Ben. I feel that solarises shouldn't be taken away from their natural habitats. Now to Neil with self-driving cars. Today I'm going to be talking about self-driving cars. These days technology is advancing. There are robots, electric cars, and more. Something that is really advancing though is self-driving cars. Groceries and pizza are being delivered with self-driving cars. People are being transported in self-driving cars. These cars are becoming a big part of our daily lives. 
but there are advantages and disadvantages to self-driving cars. Some people think self-driving cars aren't safe, and some people think they are really cool and helpful. There have been a few crashes involving self-driving cars, though. Last year, in Florida, there was a lot of traffic, and a person got killed in a self-driving car because the car didn't respond correctly to traffic. The car was a Tesla Model S. I find that horrible. There was also a car crash in Pennsylvania with a Tesla Model X. The car was on autopilot. Even though self-driving cars are dangerous, there are perks. CNN says that in some place, Domino's Pizza is starting to deliver pizza with self-driving cars. People with disabilities can drive a car on autopilot. I feel that this is really helpful. According to New Zealand, there was a paralyzed former race car driver who was able to drive on autopilot. Some companies that are really doing well in the production and safety of self-driving cars are Tesla, Waymo, BMW, Ford, Nissan, Volvo, and Mercedes. These companies are planning to release their cars this year in California. Their biggest test is New York and other big cities because of the volume of traffic. Even though self-driving cars are coming out quickly, cities could, be to, could prove to be a huge problem. According to BNBC, some companies like Aurora are testing out dangerous situations like a bike crashing into a car. Although there are many dangerous facilities, there are perks to some big cities. One advantage is that in some major city is that some major cities are laid out in a grid. It will be easier for self-driving cars to navigate themselves around some of these cities. But here's the real question. Are self-driving cars a big part of our future or are they dangerous to humans? What do you think? Thanks, Neil. I never knew self-driving cars have become such a big part of our life. Now to Sarah with things that turn 20 and 2020. My name is Sarah. Which objects, people, and thing and movies turned? Can I start over again? Sorry. Which objects, people, and movies turned 20 this year in 2020? You might ask. Hello, I am Sarah, and I am here to inform you about. What and who was born or created in the year 2000? First, let's try not to step on anything as we step, step back in time and enter the toy room. Some of the hit toys from 2000 were the PS2, the Boppet Extreme, the Dragonfly RC Stunt Racer, and the, the Groovy Girls Dolls, and the top toy of the year was the Leap Pad created by LeapFrog. The Leap Pad is an educational tablet for children three to eight years of age and helps get the child ready for school. All this playing is exhausting. How about we wind down and watch a movie? The top movies of the year were Castaway, The Emperor's New Groove, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and X-Man. Castaway was a hit movie that starred Tom Hanks. The screenwriter of the movie actually stranded themselves on, the, on an island to figure out how to do the character. Although the TV series Survivor beat the release of Castaway and showed before the movie could debut. This talk about movies is making me think about the people in them. Famous people that turned 20 in 2020 are Willow Smith, Frankie Jonas, Joshua Bassett, Ali E. Carvalho, Lori Hernandez, and Meg Donnelly. Meg Donnelly starred in the Disney Channel original movie, Zombies. She is a true blonde and loves the color orange. SweetieHigh.com says her birthday is July 25th, 2000. Some of these talented people can sing some really great songs. How about we turn up the volume and listen to some beats? Some songs that are turning 20 this year are Bye Bye Bye, Say My Name, Who Let the Dogs Out, Oops I Did It Again, and Shape of My Heart. InSync's song Bye 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 is a song about a guy who is at the end of his patience. The song was written by a Swedish songwriter, Andreas Carlson, who also wrote I Want It That Way. Within one week of the album being out, 2.4 million copies were sold. I hope you enjoyed learning about 20 objects, people, and movies that turned 20 this year. I will see you later, but for now, bye bye bye. Thanks, Sarah. So many things turned 20 in 2020.
That's it for today. And thank you for watching WTC 10 News. WWN News, where all the news is a winner. Hello, welcome to WWN News. I'm Shannon. And I'm Eli. We are so excited to share our spectacular news stories with you. Now to Ryan with his article on the flu. Hi, my name is Ryan, and today I'll be talking to you about the flu and what the consequences of not caring for this particular disease are. Did you know that llamas have a better immune system than humans? It is much harder for the llama to catch the flu. What is their secret? Could this be the answer to how to wipe out the flu from existence? Scientists have been trying to stop the flu from snaking up on us, and they realized that llamas have a great immune system in their testing. These scientists are from the CDC, Center for Disease Control and Prevention Program. According to CDC, the symptoms for the flu are a fever, coughing, sore throat, runny nose, stuffy nose, muscle and body aches, headaches, and fatigue. CDC points out that vaccines are our biggest defense against the flu right now. Some people refuse to take vaccines. 30,000 people have already died this year. Most of them have died because they didn't go to the doctor's office to get a vaccine. 31 million have been infected with the flu this year. 15 million people of these that have been infected are being checked by a doctor who can tell if it is really bad case or if they can still go to school or work. That is almost 50% of people who have gotten infected. Of the 15 million people who are being checked by a doctor, 370,000 actually do have a bad case of the flu and have to be hospitalized. According to Ikilin Health System, the flu is still more threatening to Americans than the new coronavirus. The coronavirus is a disease that is spreading from China all around the world. Americans have many reasons to think that the coronavirus is more dangerous than the flu, but more people are infected with the coronavirus than the flu. This increases the risk of people dying. The flu can sometimes be more vulnerable to people. These people are under the age of two or people over the age of 65. Pregnant women are also at a great disadvantage when it comes to the flu, and so do people who have chronic illnesses such as heart, lung, or kidney disease. Wow, I never knew llamas have better immune systems than humans. Yeah, that was very interesting. Now to know about amazing wolves surviving on Earth. Wolves. Hi, my name is Noah, and today I'll be talking to you about a super fascinating animal called the wolf. Did you know that a wolf can run up to 12 or more miles at once when chasing their prey? Wolves are also the largest member of the dog family. Did you know that wolves eat up to just 20 pounds in just one sitting? I think that's really interesting. If these wolves feel that they are endangered, they will either run or they will fight back if they're with their pack. Wolves can run up to 37 miles per hour. The lifespan of wolves is six to eight years in nature, but when their habitat is a place where they are taken care of, they can live up to 20 years old. When trying to kill their favorite prey, the buffalo, their strategy is to find the babies who are straggling behind. That is when the pack takes their opportunity to attack. But usually the strongest buffalo is with the baby. The wolves will not try to kill the buffalo because they would not have time before the mom would try and kill the wolves. Did you know that these animals have three plus inch teeth to kill their prey? To kill their prey? A pack of wolves can eat elk, bears, moose, and deer. That must be really hard to kill these wild animals. In the early 1920s, there were less than 200 wolves left, according to FWC, but now their population is rising more and more every day. Now there are around 30 species of this interesting animal. I hope that you learned some facts about these super fascinating animals. I didn't know that wolves' teeth were three inches long. Me either. Yeah, well now it's time to hear about the rare black leopard found in Africa from Bali. The black leopard has not been spotted for over a century until photographer Will Bird Lucas traveled to Kenya, Africa, where the, there were rumors on the sighting of this melanistic leopard. The black leopard is a melanistic animal 
Melanin is what makes their skin dark because it is in their cells called melanocytes. According to CNN, only 11% of the leopards locate, are located in Africa. CNN says that you can find these melanistic cats not just in Africa, but in India too. The black leopards are very rare animals. They are rare because usually other cats you see have white markings on their ears and tails, but these leopards don't, so it makes them hard to communicate. These leopards are also rare because they have two coats. Many other animals have two coats, but this is what makes them different because one coat is just fur and the other one is just skin and spots. <sighs> Many people think, wow, but what's so unique about these black leopards? Well, this is why. Usually cats have black pads on the bottom of their feet to protect them for grip, but these leopards have white at the bottom, so it's very different. These leopards are also called black panthers. One panther was tracked by following the animal's tracks in a camp and where the animal was spotted. The panther was caught on a motion sensor camera. The camera senses movement and snaps a photo. Wilbur Lucas says that when he was searching through his photos, he found a pair of yellow glowing eyes. That photo was released on February 11, 2019. He also says that's when he came to Kenya. He was not thinking he was going to find this melanistic cat, but it turns out he found what he was looking for anyways. I can't believe that instead of leopards having black pads on their feet, they have white pads. Now let's go to Shannon with the news about deadly air pollution all around the world. Hello, this is WWN News, and my name is Shannon. Today, I will be talking about air pollution and its effects on the Earth. Have you ever thought that 9 in 10 children worldwide live in dangerously high levels of air pollution? Over 300 million kids live in places that are severely polluted. The air people breathe in places like Beijing, China, is six times dirtier than the air that is considered clean. Some effects that air pollution causes are serious health risks and diseases. Emphysema and asthma are some examples of diseases caused by air pollution. According to Newslia, 5.5 years have been cut off from people's lifespans in northern China because of the high amounts of fossil fuels used there. In the south of China, people are denied central heat. What are these people dying from? Well, when people around the world burn fossil fuels or solids like coal, the gases go up into the air to create pollution. The liquid particles in the fumes that are going up into the air are called aerosols. You may see gray fumes coming out of factories, cars, and even mold spores. They can cause an unhealthy effect on our oxygen source. In 50, 1952, smog killed 4,000 Londoners in just four days, said the NRDC News. The smog that killed these Londoners was called particulate matter. Particulate matter is made from leftover burnings of things like coal and gasoline. Smaller particles are able to make it through your nose into your lungs. Immune cells will eat at the big particles and cause damage to the lungs. Still, the tiny particles will pass through the lungs into your blood system. Your arteries are places in your body where your blood flows and the plaque is an obstacle. The tiny particles from the smog narrow down your arteries even more and you have a heart attack from lack of blood flow. Now you know the dangers of air pollution and how it can kill. I hope you learned a few life lessons today. Now let's turn it over to Eli. I didn't know 4,000 Londoners died from smog in 1952. Yeah, that must have been terrible. But now it's time for Eli to take us down in history with the first woman coach to make it to the Super Bowl. Hi, my name is Eli, and today I'll be talking about Katie Sowers, the first female coach to coach in the Super Bowl. Did you know that Katie Sowers has been coaching for the 49ers since 2017? She was an assistant offensive coach. When Katie was young, she had always dreamed of being a football on a football team. She grew up in Kansas with the love of football. When she got older, she played quarterback in the Women's Football Alliance after college. According to Newslia, Sowers was first offered to run drills with the wide receivers on the Atlanta Falcons in 2016. Then in 2017, Katie was offered to coach the 49ers. Katie's main job as a coach on the 49ers was to organize practices, draw plays for the team, and prep early morning drills. According to Daily Break, Katie is a 33-year-old woman working to help women feel like they can accomplish anything they work for. Katie wasn't sure if it was right for a woman to coach in the NFL 
until she saw Becky Hammond, the first woman coach to coach in the NBA, coaching on a basketball team. Although she is the first woman to coach in the Super Bowl, according to the Echo News, she is also the first openly gay to coach in the Super Bowl. Katie has gone through tough times, like being turned down because she was gay. Katie just wanted to send the message that everyone is equal, and we should should not judge people by their gender or race. I didn't know Katie Sowers was coaching since 2016 for the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, she's pretty amazing. Now to Brennan with news about President Trump's impeachment. Donald Trump's impeachment. To impeach a president means a legislative branch, usually the House of the United States, them with a alleged crime, and then the other branch, usually the Senate, puts them on trial to prove whether they are innocent or guilty. President Trump is the third president in the in the United States history to be impeached. The, the House said that he abused the power of the executive office, then tried to obstruct or block Congress from investigating his actions. Then the House began looking into his actions from the whistleblower's complaint in August. The measure said that President Trump pressured the Ukraine to interfere with 2020 presidential election. Most of the Democrats voted for his impeachment in the House of Representatives. The final vote was 230 to 197. When President Trump was impeached, a trial took place earlier this year in the Senate. The majority of the Republicans voted not to remove President Donald Trump from the office of President of the United States. At this point, he he is running for re-election for president for the next year, for the next four year in November. Wow, I can't believe Trump got impeached but not removed from office. These articles today were great. Thank you for watching WWN News and have a great day.